This is a bug that I made for the July 2020 issue of Love Sewing magazine. I think it's really stylish. It looks ever so complicated, but it's not. It's a very simple bag to make. And of course, you can make it in any colourways that you like. I called it a humbug bag in the magazine because I made it in black and white fabric. But I thought I'd try it this time in teal and natural fabrics. And I think it works really well. So here's a list of everything that you need, what you need to cut, and then we'll get sewing. So first of all, we're going to take the four strips that measure three and a half inches by 20 inches in the dark and in the light colours. And we're going to sew them together in pairs with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now, if you have fabric that has a pattern on it, then make sure that these are right sides together. And we'll just keep sewing until we've got four sets of pairs. So I've got the four strips sewn together. Let's just take the iron and we'll give those a quick press. I'm just going to press the seams to one side. If you prefer to press them open, that's entirely up to you. What might be quite nice as well, um, I shan't in this video but would be to do a little bit of top stitching either side of the stripe. Uh, what would look lovely would be to have, I've got teal and um, natural, to stitch in a natural thread on the teal side and a teal thread on the natural side. That would add a nice bit of interest to the bag. Okay, so I'm just pressing all of mine with the fabric going over to the darker side. As I said, it's quite a heavy fabric, so colours won't show through, but um, if you've got a lighter fabric, you may prefer to do that as well. It's nice to have a really bold contrast, I think, as well, between the two fabrics. So if I was using um, a patterned fabric for one of them, I'd certainly use a plain for the other one to really make the difference between the two colours or the prints stand out. Right, it doesn't take long to do this, and then we'll start to assemble it. So those are my four pieces now, so let's pop these together. So two at a time, I'm going to sew in an L shape like so, but I'm going to start sewing a quarter of an inch or six millimetres from the edge here. So I've got a, a seam allowance here that's unsewn. That'll make it easier when we start to put the rest of the bag together. And we'll need to do this with all of the pieces. Just got a thread there. Let's cut that off. Alright, so stopping a quarter of an inch reverse stitch to secure, and we have an L shape like so. And then we'll do another piece exactly the same with the other two. So those two right sides together and again I'm going to stop so leave a quarter of an inch just unsewn at that um, at the junction. And then these two pieces are going to be sewn together. Like this. So my darker colours here are forming the square at the bottom. I need to make sure... So I've been sewing with toweling. I've been making some reusable face wipes. And toweling just gets everywhere. So I do apologise for these white bits everywhere. I think I'm, I'm going to be wearing them for weeks. Um, so again, cross in the centre. Um, depending on which way you've sewn these two together, you may have the pale across, you may have the dark across, really doesn't matter. And then we'll flip this over and sew right sides together. And in fact, I will 
um, put a clip right in the centre here to hold the seams together because I want to make sure that those meet in the middle. You can put a pin in there if you have them. And then I'm going to sew along this edge here and just like before, just at the edge right there, I'm going to leave that quarter of an inch seam allowance here and a quarter of an inch there. So I'm going to start sewing a quarter of an inch in and a quarter of an inch from that side as well. And again, I'm just going to reverse stitch to make sure that doesn't come undone. But I'm just wondering if you've um, subscribed to my channel yet. If not, if you press the red subscribe button and then the, um, the alarm bell, you'll get a notification every time I put a new video on there. Trying to do more and more. I know there's been a, a bit of a gap and I do apologise for that, but I've, I've just been so busy recently. So we've got a few more books coming out in the next year or so. Right, there we go. So we've got that cross in the centre. And again, I'm just going to press that. I like to keep pressing as I go. Anything, I just press as I go. The iron's always on at the side of me down here. Because things just look so much neater, don't they, when they've been ironed. So let's doesn't matter which direction you do these in, I tend to press kind of going round in a circle. There we go. So we have this. Okay, just covered in toweling. Okay, so now we're going to sew the sides together and this is when the bag starts to twist. So from the point where you left the seam allowance here, we're going to fold this over and sew down the side. Okay. So these aren't going to be the same length. That will be trimmed down later on. I'll just show you that again because I have had questions about this. So there's my little seam allowance knot. Fold the edges together so this raw edge is going to meet up with this raw edge, like so. And then we'll sew down to that seam allowance again. In fact, let's start there. So you can see where I stopped sewing here, that's going to be the corner. So from there, all the way down. And again, if you find it easier to pin, then pin away. Just lining up the edges as I go. Right down to the top. So we have this. So I've now got three legs sticking out. And this is where the twist starts to happen. So if I just turn this one piece out now, you can kind of see how it's twisting around. That will become clearer when I start to sew them all together. So we need to do that motion with all four sides. So here's the second one. So fold it over so the edges are meeting. That's going to be longer at the top, that's fine. And from that gap where you left the seam allowance, again sew down and we'll do that with all four pieces. Keep opening it out if it makes more sense to do so. Here's my next pair of raw edges. So that's going to come around now. So these two are together. In fact, I did a little snip in there, didn't I? Where the, there we go. Where I left that seam allowance here, a little snip in the opposite fabric, just in the seam allowance, will help that to turn around. That's it. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't. 
just makes the seam a bit flatter. So now we have this. Let me turn it the right side out and show you, because now, now it'll make sense. So let's push out all four corners. And you can see how... There you go. You can see how the fabric's twisted as we sew. Now, some of these bags um, will, at this stage, uh, put the handles on the pointy bits. I didn't. I didn't quite like that. I didn't. I didn't fancy that. I'd rather it was straight across. So arrange the bottom so you've got the four points. So the base is square, and everything's nice and flat. It kind of wants to form like this. It's a very easy way to fold. So my points aren't lined up perfectly. You can see I've got four little pyramid shapes at the top there. Still got lots of fluff all over this. <laughs> it's like when you have, um, if you've ever had a real Christmas tree and in July you're still picking the, um, the needles out of your carpet. It's, it's a little bit like that with toweling, isn't it? Then I'm going to cut straight across the top. So just underneath where the points are here, they should be lining up on both sides. I'm going to take my rotary cutter and ruler and trim so that's straight across. Um, and if I put this on my mat, you'll be able to see how that squares up as well. So I'll just go and get the mat and I'll show you what I'm doing then. So this is the way I like to do it. Um, it's very easy to make the bag square, even though it's all a little bit twisted like this. Um, so I've got the bottom of the bag straight against here, the sides are straight there, and I want to cut just underneath here, those points. So if I place my ruler across there, I know that I can get a really accurate cut, like that. So I'm going to stand up to do this. So excuse the top of my head. I can put more pressure on that way. So we have this, so it's starting to come together now. So next thing we need to do is to make up the lining. We make the lining up in the same way. Put the top around the top of the bag and we'll need the straps as well. Now with the lining, these are wider pieces because they, you don't have the stripe in the lining. So I'm going to sew these together in the same way as I did the outer bag. So in the L shape with that little gap at the end, just like I did before. I'm using the same colour thread, so it really doesn't matter on this. Should have changed to a natural colour, really. So leave that quarter of an inch allowance at the end. Nice thing about this kind of fabric is there isn't really a right and wrong side, so you don't have to check it every five minutes. And these two. So again, these are going to sew together with the seam meeting in the middle. So I just put my clip. Let's have another little clip in that centre point, which is where the seams match. And then remember where I'm sewing along the side here to leave that little gap again. Just makes the uh, this the seam neater, the corners neater on the outside of your bag. If you can hear footprints, by the way, Bobbin's right underneath my feet. She's just got herself comfortable. Because we've got um, a wooden floor in the studio here, um, she just makes rather a lot of noise when she's walking along you know, the claws on the wood. But she's settled down right on my left foot. Sometimes it's on my right foot, and that's the foot that I sew with. So my machine suddenly unexpectedly starts sewing all by itself. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Just like before, we're going to sew up the sides. Um, so as with the outer section of the bag, 
sew all the sides together in the same way so you're going to get that twist again put it on your cutting mat if you have one and then um, chop the top off so you'll have two bags your outer bag and your lining bag to both the same size So now we have the lining that looks just like the outside of the bag. So put those to one side for a moment and we'll make up the straps. Need the iron again for this. Now you can make these as long or as short as you like. I've made them quite short, but if you wanted a shoulder bag, just make them longer. I'm going to fold the long edges of the straps to the center and press. If your fabric's a little bit floppy, then um, you can use some spray starch that would help to give you a nice crisp seam and if you are using um, interfacing if it's a lightweight interfacing or light or medium um, i'd certainly use that on finer fabrics if you're using something like a fusible fleece then maybe just one strip down the center because otherwise you're going to have a really chunky handle but again that's that's maybe what you like it's nice to be able to um, to personalize things isn't it make them how you want them to be long straps short straps adjustable straps thicker straps thinner straps do what you like so we need to do this with both of the straps and then sew down each side that gives me a finished one inch wide strap so if you wanted to add any hardware maybe um d-rings to fasten this onto the bag maybe that'd be nice then you need one inch rings second one to the center can you hear the dog again there she is she needs slippers i think and then fold all of this in half again that's it, then we'll sew down each side Whoops. doesn't need to be sewn down each side, it just looks nice when you've got two rows of stitching I think so I can lengthen the stitch a little bit because it's not a seam so I'm going up to 2.6 and so then we'll take the band pieces that go around the top so one for the front one for the back and then these straps are going to be placed evenly each side here so I'm going to pop mine about four inches from each side so I'll have a few more clips and they need to face downwards and I'm just going to sew within the seam allowance to attach that to the top so I'm just going to fold that in half and make sure that they're in the same position so they're symmetrical and the same with the strap on this side so facing downwards make sure it's not twisted and I'm just going to match these up with the ones that I've just put on here And again, just so quite close to the edge. And the same on this one. Actually comes together really quickly, doesn't it? The, um, the time consuming thing was the the figuring out for me but the cutting out probably takes longer than the putting the bag together so 
So that's that. Then we'll take the second part and we're going to sew across the top here and across the top there. So you've got the handle sandwiched in between the two pieces. And again, if you prefer to pin or clip these before you sew them, that's absolutely fine. Um, I think with bags like this, it's quite easy not to. And smaller pieces of fabric, they tend to stick together anyhow as you're sewing. So same on this one. So that's both pieces. So let's open these up. And I'm going to sew the two together, right sides together. Just along the side bits down here. So make sure that the seam is matching again in the middle. I'm just going to squish the seam to one side as I sew. And the same on the other side. Make sure the seams are squished in the same direction. So this has formed a tube and when I fold it over you can see how that's now the band at the top of the bag. So I'm just going to press that again. And I'll put a top stitch all the way around the seam because that's going to make it sit neater but it looks nice as well. I like a bit of top stitching. So I'm just a willow. That'll be another dog walk past the window then. She's got a deep bark but she's wagging her tail like much. She just wants to go and play. Because take your time with this because it's worth it. It does make your bag look neater when you know seams are nice and crisp. Almost there. In fact, there we go. Right. So now I'll top stitch around the top seam. If you've got a free arm on your sewing machine, it might be helpful. I, I don't have one of mine. So I can go longer with the stitch again. And I'm just sewing about a quarter of an inch from the edge. There. Right, so let's trim that thread back. And then we can start to put the whole thing together. So take your outer bag and we're going to place this band with the handles facing downwards over the top of the bag. I've had the, as, as you squish the bag open, let's start that again. When you squish the bag open, you know, when you cut the top off, so the base was nice and square. because there aren't any side seams on here, so it's, it's quite difficult to see where the handle should go. But if you squish it flat like so, so the back base is square here, these are, th are, what's, are where the side seams are going to marry up to. And that makes sure that you've got the handles right in the centre of the bag. So again, they're facing down. 
and this slips inside. It doesn't really matter if they're slightly twisted, it's not very noticeable, but if you can get them square then that's nice I think. So we'll have a clip here. And we'll go all the way around like this. And again, if you prefer to pin, then stick a few pins in there. If you don't have any clips, then don't rush out and buy them. Like so. Now, if you want to do at this point, you can do a tacking stitch or a basting stitch all the way around the top. I'm going to go straight into putting the lining over the top of this. So we've got the bag, we've got the, um, the band facing downwards. My lining I've got in the same, I've squished it the same way as I did the outside of the bag, so it's all kind of uniform and square, so I know where those sides are going to go. I forgot to mention earlier, and don't forget to leave a turning gap. Um, better go back and put some words on the screen there. Not the end of the world, um, you can always pick a few stitches if not, um, but you'll just need a, a gap in the lining somewhere in one of the seams so that you can turn this the right side out. So let's push this inside here. And again, take your time, just line all of this up. So you want all of the top edges meeting together. And then I'm going to very carefully replace the clips or the pins over all three layers. So when I come to sew around the top, I'm sewing around all three pieces at the same time. And we're almost finished. Again, seam-wise, I'm not pressing open. They're all at a bit of an angle. So I'm just um, squashing them all in one direction. Take your time to get everything nice and flat. And your seams nice and straight. It's quite a fun bag to make though, isn't it? And I can imagine making this in different sizes. So you could make a huge tote bag, make a great storage bag or a laundry bag. Or you could make a very small one. I think once you've got the idea as to how this has been constructed, it's going to be quite easy to vary the size. Just coming back to the beginning. We are right. And then that turning gap that we left in the lining, we're going to turn the whole thing through. And looks a bit small actually, we'll see how we go. Oh, we're okay. Come on, I want to see what you look like. And then we'll have the, obviously, a gap in the bottom um, of the lining, so we'll need to sew that over. <laughs> so I'll just push out all of those corners. Again. With the gap in the lining, if you pull the two edges away from each other, they, the raw edges kind of curl in. So we'll just sew over there to close it. Do that by hand if you want it to be invisible. I think maybe if you're selling the bag or you're giving it away, it might be quite nice to do that. And then we'll push the lining inside the bag. Final press. So 
I'll just press around the top here. I think it needs to go to the big iron and have a good old blast of steam at this point. Yes, I think I'll do that. But then my bag will be finished. Well, there we go. Like I said earlier, a good old press makes all the difference, doesn't it? Um, that's my bag finished. So I hope you like it and I hope you enjoy making yours. <laughs>